right, so here is our summary of the Stormcast units that we see in, in Season 2. Let's quickly go over them and give you guys a quick breakdown in case you don't have a lot of time. Uh, S tier, we've got Vanquishers. They're cheap. You can revive them with Call for Aid. They are our, our cheapest screen, and we need cheap screens in this army. We're trying to squeeze as many points as we can. Uh, crossbow Judicators do tremendous damage. They're battle line always, which means they unlock key to victories to make your heroes immune to shooting. Uh, they're a great unit. Reinforce them. Do a lot of shots. Pew, pew, pew. Great stuff. Uh, long Strikes, they are a staple for a reason. They do accurate damage, not the highest damage. You know, you might find yourself running a bit short on damage if you bring a lot of Long Strikes. Uh, you won't be able to kill stuff like 10 Chosen, uh, 15 Hearthguard, 30 Volkites, all kinds Blade of stuff. Guys. Gonna, Blade Guys. All kinds of stuff yeah. is going to be really tough to kill with just Long Strikes. You can balance it out with other things in your army, uh, but they're still fantastic. Super long range, super accurate, very good sharpshooters for killing heroes. Fulminators, they do the most damage. <laughs> That's it. They just do yeah. the most damage in the game. Uh, S tier, automatically. Uh, yeah. Storm Drakes, Dan, you want to tell us why Storm Drakes are S tier? Yeah, Storm Drakes are S tier through a combination of having monster keyword for roar and other monstrous actions, which can matter quite a bit. Um, their ability to yoink models even matters a lot. The three inch coherency matters for pile in tricks, uh, as well as their oblong base size allows them to basically have a six inch pile in like threat range to pull stuff. If you want to pull in like some shooting or pull in other units that are, it would be inconvenient for your opponent to, to get to move. Um, people think storm drakes are unwieldy. We make other things unwieldy. Um, the other thing is flying. Uh, they're fast at 12 inches, so that flying really matters a lot, along with that 3-inch coherency. Just allows them to be in a bunch of places. The fact that they're 9 wounds uh, lets them get cover. Uh, they're just a great unit to go ahead and buff up, and they take buffs like Gardas uh, very easily, who's of course on this list as well, uh, and can really multiply and uh, it, it's they're a critical mass unit that's mm -hmm. just really what happens is once you get a bunch of them in it all this stuff stacks they ignore spells on a four up there's just so many things that they do that's really annoying and makes your it really hard for your opponent to deal with they're the unanswerable question in the in the stormcast list yep they do have some downsides you know the drake the, the breath is really swingy and their damage mm -hmm. is not the highest output in our game in the game so like you have to compensate that for, for that in your list uh but for everything else you mentioned yep fantastic unit great to build around uh, mm -hmm. Gardas, he still has a 5-up ward aura, even though he got nerfed, he's still really good. You're still going to use him. Uh, Lord Relictor, 5-point nerf isn't enough. Still absolutely necessary to translocate units around. And there's other prayers as well that are also really good that we might use as well. Don't take that to mean that the Relictor needs another nerf. No, 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 he's fine. He's fine. <laughs> no, no, he's okay. fine. Knight and Cantor, there is one spell again in every army you want to cancel, and this guy does it guaranteed at once per game, and that's enough to swing things in, the, in your momentum so hard that you will come come away with a win. Uh, Knight and Cantor, and then also sometimes cast spells like Celestial Blades, which gives you bonuses to wound, or just Mystic Shield for plus one to save. So, excellent unit. Uh, rounding out the A tier, we've got Vindictors. We think a big squad of Vindictors is a really good play this season. Uh, you can buff them up with defensive spells, stick them on an objective, maybe even run a Stormkeep list, uh, our namesake, and they count as three models each. And that's actually not a bad choice. Uh, Annihilators with Grand Hammers. McGonk, do you want to talk about Annihilators? Yeah, Annihilators with Grand Hammers drop a C, uh, tier. Like uh, last time they were S. I think this season they're a little bit uh, iffy because they're great into elite targets, not so much into the horde meta or infantry heavy meta that we're going to anticipate. And they're still going to kill infantry by the dozen. Um, and they do have a really interesting niche where if all the Galatian champions are within an inch to take advantage of Sworn Bodyguard or not be able to be shot, then Annihilators just drop mortal wounds and get more uh, uh, value out of their drop. Uh, that being said, I think the imperative tax on them is really going to be felt this season. We're seeing more and more books come out, and Stormcast and Peters are just way too highly costed. I think if for this unit to go into S tier, uh, I think the imperative would have to drop another 20 points, maybe 20, 20, 30 points. Yeah, it's just an efficiency thing, and their their max damage per squad isn't that good. And uh, we could run them reinforced, but that runs the risk of failing the charge and instantly losing the game because you've just delivered almost 500 points of units into the middle of the board with no defense. So. Uh, yeah, Grand Hammer's going down a tier this season. Uh, protectors, still good. Um, there's some new tricks that you can pull off with them using Quicksilver Draught and the Sworn Bodyguards. They are fun, but not. Uh, they kind of just require too many support pieces. They're not as efficient as some of our other units like like uh, Fulminators, Storm Drakes, and ultimately they just fall a little bit short of the S tier, but they are still a fantastic unit having a 2 plus save all the time on 15 wounds per squad. Really good. Evocators do a buttload of damage. Uh, they are great at chewing up low save units with their Grand Staves, and then the Lightning Arc Blast does a lot of damage to any other unit within 3 inches. 
of the unit. So they can split their attacks, which is really useful. If you have them in the hero phase fighting, they also can do the lightning blast there, which is very useful. They're just all around a solid damaging unit. Uh, the only reason they're not S tier is because they're not as quite as durable as the rest of our units. You can't stack uh, defensive bonuses on them like you could with rap with uh, Fulminators or Storm Drakes. And they require a little bit of support from a wizard. They need a another wizard on the table in order to cast Louch on to give them that speed that they need. Uh, but they are overall a solid unit. High threat range, reliable-ish, <laughs> but overall pretty good. Uh, chariots, still just a solid all-around piece. Um, sometimes they're screen that has a lot of wounds and a 3-plus save. Sometimes they're just a fast pinning unit with a minus one hit. Sometimes they just add mortal wounds on the charge. Overall, just a solid unit at 170 points. Um, not quite S-tier capable because they're low impact, but they are very efficient and very just a solid block of stats to put in the spot. The fact that they don't lose any space until they take 12 wounds is really big in this game. Uh, you can I've, I've tanked you know knights, Chaos Knights charging into them and not lost any space. They aren't able to get onto the objective with other units. Um, yeah, fantastic unit. Knight Azuros is an interesting choice for the new Galatian Command Battalion, uh, being able to fight in the hero phase. He does about 10 damage on 3s, 3s, round 1, and then he has that plus 1 hit lantern, which can save you command points. But where what puts him into A tier instead of something like C tier uh, is that he can use the Quicksilver Draw in order to fight first in the, hero, in the combat phase, and then pull a sworn bodyguard unit in to fight first with him. We, we like units like 15 Vindictors or 10 Protectors or 5 Retributors. The positioning is a little janky and it's not always a reliable tactic because your opponent may be able to play around it if you're not immaculate with your positioning. Uh, but it is a strong combo. It is like Holy Command strong to be able to fight first with one of our hammer units on the opponent's turn. Uh, so if you can master that combo, the Knight Azuros is a good pick. Lord Castellan, plus one save. We like hammer units to be survivable. We need them to live throughout most of the game. Plus one save goes a long way. So Castellan, excellent unit. Uh, Lord Imperitant lives and dies with Grand Hammers. The ability to issue a command for free is a nice cherry on top. But if you want to use Vindictors uh, to deep strike them in seven inches, if you want to deep strike uh, Annihilators, which I think is the only way to use Annihilators really, then you need an Imperitant. So he's A tier just by default. B tier, Sequiturs are looking playable this season. They're a 10 point upgrade over the Vanquishers and they get a little more damage sometimes and then a little more defense in the combat phase. And that's an okay upgrade for 10 points if you have it to spare. Retributors do a lot of damage. They, they do a lot of damage, uh, but they're slow. And unfortunately that's always held them back. This season though, being able to fight first defensively with an Azuros makes them a little bit better. And I think that combat trick is enough to earn them a B slot. And it might be enough to push you into playing Knights Excelsior instead of something like Hammers of Sigmar or, or Hall of Knights, just because the efficiency that comes from having a couple Paladin units be battle line is really nice. They make your heroes immune to shooting, unless they're enemy sharpshooters, but no, I, I don't think that many people are gonna run it. Um, yeah, Retributors is all around pretty good. Do good damage. That's what we need. Aether Wings are a cheap, fast screen. Three models for 70 points with a 12-inch move. That also gives long strikes plus one hit. Awesome. You'll probably bring them every time you use Raptors. Judicators with bows are a solid alternative if you want something between Judicators with crossbows and long strikes. Uh, they have the, a higher range than crossbows, lower damage, uh, but on the other hand, they're also way more wounds than long strikes would be. So they're a fine choice to put five of these guys in the backfield, hold an objective, and just constantly ping damage where you need it. They are also battle line always, which means while they're doing that, they are protecting your support heroes from enemy shooters. Tempesters are a jack of all trades unit that actually does it properly. They have decent shooting and decent melee, and that's all you need on a 10 inch move unit with a three plus save and 12 wounds per squad. Uh, we've been experimenting with running a squad of six of these guys. We will let you know how that goes. Brackalines are looking really good this season with their 40 point drop from 280 points to 240 points. They're now the same price as Fulminators and they present a really interesting option. While they're not going to be as efficient as Fulminators, which is what keeps them from being any higher tier, uh, pretty much in most situations, Fulminators are going to do more damage. They have a higher inherent save. Uh, they lose a little less from taking uh, the same amount of wounds somewhat, even though Dracolines have more overall wounds. Um, it can matter. However, Dracolines are faster. They are 12 inches to Fulm's 10 inches. And they uh, provide another wizard, which adds an extra unbind. Um, and they're able to buff themselves. So instead of taking up your Celestial Blades, they give themselves Celestial Blades with Empower. Uh, so Dracolines can become a little efficient depending on the list. Uh, they look to be really interesting uh, in a unit of three, especially. Uh, if you're going to run uh, a set of two Fulminators, it's really worth looking at just running Dracolines instead. Um, as if they're not going to be a priority target, the 4-up save doesn't matter as much to like light shooting, for example. 
and uh, that can matter a bit more that they have more wounds, especially if there's some kind of AoE mortal wounds, ping mortal wounds of any kind. It can matter, as well as their damage being really close to uh, those fulminators in the charge. They unfortunately don't reinforce well, which is what also separates them a little more. And they can use Lauchon, so they can also have the highest threat range for Stormcast in the game, being able to move Lauchon and then move another 12 inches, and they inherently reroll charges. So very good unit, very fast. Uh, consider them, especially if you're if you're going to run a unit of two fulminators. You can take Draconis too if you want. Uh, the Draconis also rounds out our, our, our uh, starts off our B tier heroes here. The Draconis is B tier purely because of what he can do with Storm Drakes. He's unfortunately inefficient by himself at 300 points. It's not worth for his damage. Uh, the Ren 3 on his sword is very interesting as it can help a lot in certain matchups, uh, especially against like Alarith, for example. Um, but Draconis brings a uh, double breath. It allows the uh, Storm Drakes to, to be double tapped. They can shoot in the hero phase and then shoot again later, of course, in their shooting phase. Uh, this is really good if you're bringing a block of four Storm Drakes, but less so if you're only going to bring squads of two. Um, he really comes into his own as the general, uh, where he can take something like Scintillating Trail and an Arcane Tome. Uh, really lets him be able to be a good buff piece for those Storm Drakes, uh, be an unbind uh, with Master of Magic. Uh, he can be, bring a lot of utility with that. He's another monster. In case you need some monstrous actions, he unlocks uh, the This One's Mind battle tactic, which also helps a lot. Again, his damage is not bad. Uh, it's just not necessarily significant for 300 points. So he can be a very good hero uh, making those Storm Drakes battle line, and that's what keeps him in the B tier. It's not because he's efficient on his own. It's not because he's an amazing hero with amazing abilities on his own. He he lives and dies with Storm Drakes, and even then, he's not the go-to general for Storm Drakes necessarily. Yeah, there's just better support that Storm Drakes want, like Gardas, Relict, or Castellan, Encanter, things like that. Knight Judicator is a shooting unit that can't be shot. Um, he's also a champion that can score battle tactics. He creates a unit of two Griffhounds that can go out and contest objectives on their own and screen and deny space and all kinds of interesting things. He is only six damage a turn, though, so if you bring a lot of these guys, your list is going to start to fall behind. You won't be able to deal with the 180 wounds of stuff that you're going to see across the table sometimes, uh, depending on the army you're facing. Uh, so just be careful. You don't over-dedicate too many resources into him, but he's not a bad choice by any means. The Knight Relictor is 30 points cheaper than a Lord Relictor, and that's really the only reason he sees play. He's also a priest. He can translocate. Uh, he can take the High Priest command trait to re-roll to translocate. Uh, but yeah, if you have the points, use the Lord Relictor. Otherwise, use a Knight Relictor. That's his niche. And that's enough to get a B tier. So that should tell you just how important it is to have translocate in your army. Knight Zephyros is a 100-point hero with a built-in teleport. That's pretty much her role. Nailed it. And that's a really useful thing to have this season uh, because we're going to be fantastic. teleporting. We're going to yeah, be teleporting to objectives. Champions need to contest objectives. Ha being able to do that every single turn without having to roll the dice is really good. And you can give her some more utility by giving her an arcane tome, so you can like translocate her. She can cast some spells, and then she can teleport over to an objective. So there's there's neat little tricks you can do there. Uh, Karazai is a beat stick, but he's a good one. Unlike the rest of our terrible, terrible beat sticks, he really needs a lot of support heroes to make it work. He wants plus one save. He wants a guardus. He wants um, every buff you can give him, really. And then he becomes a really, really good beat stick who can probably just kill the entire enemy army by himself. Uh, his damage against monsters is really good. His tail attack ruins infantry units. Anything with like 10 or more models just, just crumbles. It's rough. Uh, he, he requires a lot of support and those lists aren't super efficient and they kind of lack options tactically. So we're ranking him as B tier, uh, but he is good and fun. So try him out. Krondus, on the other hand, is a support hero. Uh, you, want to, you want to use our regular hammer units with him, in particular shooting units combo well with him because he can give units minus one to save rolls. And our, you know, Rend 1, Rend 0 shooting units like Tempesters and Crossbow Judicators really, really like that. It's a huge boost to their damage output. So those two things combined make Krondus a pretty good support choice. Unfortunately, he's not a champion, so he can't contest objectives the way they can. And he's just a little inefficient at 550 points. Going to get a bit quicker here with the C tier. Quick explanations here. Liberators, too expensive, still usable, but just too expensive. Use sequiturs instead for the most part. Uh, annihilators, they're a pinning unit that competes with other pinning units. Um, maybe sometimes when you're running Grand Hammers, you use Annihilators, and that's about the only time. Two plus save seems good. Nine wounds is not. Reinforced? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, prosecutors with Hammers, they are our go-to unit for absorbing Unleash Hell. They're a 12-inch move screening unit that has a pretty wide formation, so they take up about as much space as five models in a, in a standard unit. Their 12-inch move, coupled with a 3d6 charge, allows them to absorb Unleash Hell from armies like Lumineth and Stormcast. If you want to charge into four Storm Drakes, you're going to need a squad of Prosecutors to, to eat that Mortal Wound Blast. 
Vanguard Hunters. Sometimes you use them if you're playing Astral Templars. Not all the time. Their damage is low. They can't be revived with Call for Aid. Yeah, not much more to say about them. Castigators, interesting little three-man unit. Not really worth running uh, reinforced because they just require too many buffs. And even then, crossbow adjudicators just do it better. But as a three-man squad, they can be a nice little last few points in a list. Uh, hold an objective in the back and do whatever damage you want. Think of them like Aether Wings, but they shoot for 20 points more. Knight Arcanum, cheapest Stormcast wizard. Sometimes you want a cheap Stormcast keyword wizard. Uh, unfortunately, the Knight Encantor is only 10 points more. Knight Vexilor can drop a Meteor. You can bring five Knight Vexilors, and they can drop five Meteors and deal 5d3 mortal wounds to the enemy army. Good players will play around it, but it's super fun. Lord Arcanum on foot. There's not really that many good spells that he wants to cast. They're all too expensive. But sometimes you find the one, and he fits into that list. Lord Arcanum on Griff Charger. He can teleport around every turn and cast spells and take Mount Traits. Uh, unfortunately, he's not a champion, though, so his tactical value is, is limited. Lord Arcanum on Toralot. As a monster, not a champion, has a plus one hit, aura, or pulse, or something, we're not sure. But he has a nice support piece and a shooting focus list. Lord Veritan, sometimes you have a Knight Relictor and you want you have 20 points left over, you can upgrade it to a Veritan. If you have 30 points, you upgrade it to a Lord Relictor, but sometimes you only have 20 points left over. Having the Lord keyword is a big deal. The Lord keyword affects the range of holy commands, it affects the range of prayers, it affects the range of spells, it affects a lot of things. Having Lord over Knight is a big deal. Drake's one Templar. He can take a, a whole bunch of stuff that the regular Star Drake can take, but he's 100 points cheaper, which means you can bring more stuff in a list with him. And that efficiency kind of kind of works. His damage is not great. He has a 4 plus save. But he's cheaper. And he's got a Star Drake, which can instantly eat stuff. So maybe. We'll see. Uh, Lord Celestin on Star Drake. Like a Drake Sword and Templar, but with plus one save. And that's actually enough to get basically the same ranking. Uh, five, 100 points for plus one save. I don't know. We'll see. Astrea, she buffs Sacrosanct units, but only in Hammers of Sigmar. Uh, you can make a super durable block of Sequiturs or Evocators, or even stack it on a Toralon if you're feeling cheeky. How useful is that? Useful enough to get a C-tier. Celestin Prime is not good enough in a Stormcast army to be <laughs> as he is in any other army. We can already drop units in reserve, his damage for his points is not very good, and he still will just die uh, on the counterattack. Opponents will just be able to screen him out and then kill him. Uh, the ability to just guarantee 12-inch charge out of reserve, really good. I'm sure somebody will find a use for it somewhere. Uh, Vandis can buff up a big squad of 15 Vindictors. I don't know if that's better than just using Hollow Knights instead. Andrasta can revive units around her. Her damage isn't great. Uh, her ability against monsters isn't great. That, that revive is pretty much all she's got going for her. And then everything in the D tier and the F tier uh, is there because it's either... It's too niche. It's it, we can't really find any kind of use for it in in a competitive setting, or it's just massively overcosted. And uh, if you want to learn more, check out our full tier list video. All right, thanks everybody for watching. Hopefully, this shorter tier list has been uh, easier for people to get into rather than our super long discussions. If you guys like stuff like this, uh, please leave us a comment. Let us know, and we can do more of this in the future. Check out our Discord where we discuss this kind of thing. Maybe you'll change our mind if you join and uh, speak to us about it. Uh, otherwise, yeah, check out our, our full tier list video, and uh, we'll have some uh, timestamps in there to help you find these things a little better.